It's time to master Twin Motion's material library in under 10 minutes. Are you ready? Let's go. Since we're talking about materials in this video, I thought it would be appropriate that we have the Twin Motion materials room open in front of us. This is the demo template that's available to anybody to download. You just simply go to the home page, go to the learning tab in the top left hand corner and either download or open the materials room. Now, depending on the caliber of the computer, you may or may not need to drag the preferences down. Control P opens up our preferences or edit up top goes to preferences and then just lower the quality to where it's a little bit more manageable for your computer. This has a lot going on, so it may be relatively slow. But let's start by using the material picker up the top. The material picker is all about our materials. Use it as an eyedropper tool. For example, in Photoshop, you'd use the same tool. So select any material to get started. Let's say we want these tiles at the bottom, cement tile four, or potentially even the mouse plastic on the bottom of the screen. No matter what we pick, the materials and the general premise of this tutorial is gonna be relatively the same. For simplicity, let's start with these headphones. You'll see the rubber appears on the right hand panel. If for whatever reason you don't have that panel, it's because properties isn't selected down the bottom. So go ahead, hit properties and it will open back up. First of all, we're gonna have our color palette, which allows us to simply click on the main color and adjust the color in real time. So as we slide up and down, that color real time is gonna change and we can adjust the base layer. For a simple rubber like this, it's really easy because it's base color. But if we were on tiles, for instance, that had a texture of the top, well, changing that color would do different things depending on the base color itself. If we come back to our headphones, we can play with our grunge, which if we zoom into these headphones, basically just creates a little bit of dirt, a little bit of fingerprints, things like that. So we can slide in, slide out to see what we want. If we want like an almost camouflage effect, that could also be used with this feature here. Luminosity basically increases and decreases the brightness produced by that texture. So if you want something to be brighter at nighttime, this is where you're gonna set it. Typically, we just keep it as 50. If you open up the details panel, that's where you'll see your 3D texture. So if you're importing 3D textures from a different website, like for example, these concrete blocks in the background, you can have the texture here and you can just open up your embedded texture to import it. We do have our saturation, gamma, lift and gain in these sections as well. Generally, there's no need to play with this too much unless you're really looking to fine tune the overall texture. If you're new to InMotion, which I'm assuming you are, if you're looking at this tutorial, then the world UV space and local space section is going to go way over your head. Basically, if we keep it to off, it's going to keep things relatively simple. We can randomize our UV to make sure we're not getting the same pattern repeated. However, once we start looking at world space and local space, that's when we're actually talking about mapping these textures directly in line with the 3D model and making sure they're perfectly aligned and sync exactly how they need to be in the real world. So for instance, if we're looking at that brick wall and we needed it to align at a perfect position, we could go ahead and play with our world space and our local space, but we're diving too deep for this tutorial. Rotation, relatively self-explanatory. It rotates the texture around. Scale, same scenario. It makes it bigger, makes it smaller. Roughness is an interesting one that we can play with because if we decrease our roughness intensity, it will give it more shine. If we increase our roughness intensity, it will completely make it flat and dull. What it also does is kind of remove the edges when you go flat and dull and makes it really sharp whilst taking away all contrast, all shading and everything in between. So if you don't need anything specific, drop it down to 50, keep it where it is. If you want it to be a little bit shinier, we can drop it to about 10%. We've got now shiny headphones. If we were importing it, this is again where we drop it into that texture. But for the headphones specifically, it has one pre-built in. Clear coat is something new that's been added into Twinmotion 2025. Once enabled, basically it does exactly that. It adds a clear coat. It's designed more so for vehicles than anything else. And it also has a roughness and opacity scale. Now, if you're leaving this roughness at 50% and then playing with the clear coat, you're gonna see a different result with a little bit more finesse and ability to fine tune exactly how you like. However, for most things, I still find that the roughness works relatively well and you can make that work the way you need. Metallicness works hand in hand with roughness and generally in polar opposites. If you need something to be shinier, but lighter, you wanna drag the metallicness down. If you want something to be shinier, but darker, you drag the metallicness up. You see on these headphones as it changes live in front of us. If we move down to normal and let's go something like this brick wall behind because it actually has a normal map, whereas the headphone doesn't. If we adjust our normal map, 
you'll see that the bump goes in and out. Basically what I mean by bump is the depth and perceived 3D element within the texture. So increasing the normal back up to 100 gives it almost a 3D effect even though it is a 2D element. Whereas when we bring it down to zero, it is dead flat. It looks blurred and smudged. So if we want a better 3D effect, we're always looking to include this bump map or the normal map. Once again, fine tuning, playing with intensity height map, we can really fine tune this to get it to look exactly the way we want it. Generally, Twin Motion for every one of their textures has fine tuned things, so you don't have to worry too much. Ambient occlusion generally plays around with the shadows and the textures, unless you're really being pedantic about your model. This is another one of those things I don't recommend you need to worry too much about. Emissions is only applicable if you're playing with neon lights. If you are, then you simply increase emission and it will get brighter and create a greater glow. Opacity and X-ray, two more things you don't really need to play with. X-ray kind of gives you exactly what you're looking for, an X-ray effect see-through. It's only applicable in a couple very unique scenarios. And last but not least, miscellaneous. Two-sided is something I generally turn on for almost everything that's rounded, curved, or concave or convex. It basically allows it to make sure that pattern is distributed throughout the entire model itself and you're not getting any weird gaps. If you keep weather permitted for everything on and make sure you adjust the sound if you're planning on exporting the sound from Twin Motion, that kind of rounds out the general requirements of materials. But this is where we want to get a little bit more advanced. This is where we want to get a little bit more specialized and why we've come in to this specifically here. Inside our user library on the left hand side, we currently have absolutely nothing. And that's because if we go into our finder, go to documents, Twin Motion 2025, user library, we'll see it's completely empty. But back in Twin Motion 2024 in my user library, I had a whole bunch of GUIs. Now, this is where you never want to delete a previous version without copying and pasting this across. So as one example, let's just copy this timber laminate and paste it into my 2025 user library. You see, nothing happens immediately. We do need to refresh this scene. Now that we've refreshed Twin Motion and restarted it, we can come into our user library and we'll see our timber laminate appears. This is a material I custom created previously in the past, which allows us to simply drag and drop it directly into any project. For me, it's just the perfect timber veneer. And we can do that with any material that we create or even stealing from Twin Motion's material room. Let's take a look at this polished concrete look on the right hand side. If we use our material picker to bring it up, we can then click on these three dots next to the preview and go add to user library. It will automatically create that material on the left hand side and we can simply rename it. So for example, we can call this one polished concrete for quicker reference later down the track and we can go ahead and drag and drop that anywhere. If we wanted to organize and create files, we can do that in Twin Motion, or we can do it in our Finder. For instance, if we simply press the plus button, it'll create a new category. We can right click, rename that to Timber, and then drag and drop our Timber Laminate into that. Repeat the same process for concrete and drag and drop our polished concrete in there. So now we have a little bit more of an organized and filed structure. Anyway, that's all from me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.